dear viewers, welcome back to your Leno TV. Today we like to discuss, and as usual, this is the big point agenda. And I think recently you've noticed that your Leno TV has two segments. Just for laughs, whereby we get to crack your ribs. And then, the big point agenda. This is where we get to talk about the latest happenings in the political arena, internationally and locally. We give you uh, events as they occur. And this time round, we're even giving you pictorial views and the vid videos that uh, to actually so that you can actually look at the scenes and compare with our analysis. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as usual, you know, please take a moment and hit the subscribe button. If you are a first time visitor but if you are a subscriber please you can give us a thumbs up comment down there you can hit the notification bell so that every time we upload a video you become the first person to get notified now as usual you know the week has been busy with sakaja's issues then sonko's issues on this other side you know both of these people are in the uh, in, in in Nairobi for a one of them for the Senate post the other one for the governor's post <coughs> now we know what happened the tribulations that uh, actually befell Sonko that led to the denial of the certificate for gubernatorial seat or rather yeah for the contest now Sakaja's case is a bit different because we know Sakaja was cleared by IBC we even saw Sakaja posting on the social media that he had been cleared because all his documents were valid. Now trouble started because you know IBC had another window where by now you if you have any complaint you can actually channel there then it can be heard with the tribunal and then you know further investigations can be done maybe perhaps maybe if you know something that the IBC did not know that maybe if they had known initially, then that wouldn't have led to the, uh, the actually the declarations that they made during the handover of certificates for the various seats. So Sakaja was a victim this same round. Sakaja, we know that there are some people complained that Sakaja's degree was fake. Allow me to use the word fake because that is the word that people understand easily. So after these complaints, then the case had to be set straight. And the, the, the commission for you for your university <coughs> that actually uh, validate these degrees, they resorted to denying acknowledgement of Sakaja's degree. Now, this has actually thrown uh, Sakaja's dreams under the carpet. His, his gubernatorial dream seems to have met the ice, if I may use that word, because uh, now the chances that IBC might nullify the award are very high, because, you know, with all these allegations and the, the, the uh, body that actually is tasked with uh, confirming this validity or legality of this, certificate, of this degree certificate has actually denounced this Sakaja's degree certificate. Now, ladies and gentlemen, do you think IBC will still hold on to their initial declaration? Or rather, let me not use another word, their initial uh, issuance of, 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 the, of, of the degree certificate? I think, should IBC go ahead and, conf and and actually proceed as earlier planned by allowing Sakaja to vie for the for the Nairobi's governor seat, then Sonko's case might cause some jitters within IBC. So we are seeing a scenario where by now Chebukatle team might decide to to undo whatever they had actually done. And what did they do? They actually gave a nod to Sakaja to continue with the gubernatorial ambitions. So we are likely to see a scenario where now Chebukat will find himself in a very tight position because now he has to 
to actually renounce whatever he had actually made uh, public by saying that he had awarded Sakaja, uh, according to the documents that he went through, that Sakaja was actually allowed to contest. Now this time round is going to, uh, you know, it's a very tricky position for for Chibukati led team, but then it's a decision that Ch that Chibukati must make. So the question that we Kenyans would like to ask ourselves is Sakaja's case, case a political witch hunt? I don't know. But we saw Sakaja release a, uh, a document yesterday that he was uh, insinuating that that Uhuru's government was involved in this scandal. That there were so many correspondences that uh, after Team University of Uganda acknowledging that they, they, they actually recognized that document, then what followed was a series of correspondences from the various government uh, departments that actually led to now, uh, again, uh, Team University denouncing this degree. So we think there is a heavy hand in this old circus something you know we is that is that what william ruto keeps saying the deep state could that be the deep state that is actually working and if uru kenyatta was actually uh, according to what sakaja says uru is actually his political mentor then why would uru want to kill sakaja's ambitions maybe it's for the sole reason that polycap igathe is supposed to be the de facto governor. I mean, the handshake governor, if I allow me to use that word, the handshake governor, because we understand the arrangement of the Azimio uh, camp in a Nairobi uh, position, a uh, gubernatorial position, arrangement or other, is that for Jubilee took, Jubilee took uh, the, the governor's position, then the deputy was actually given to Waipa. In exchange, uh, ODM took the sen senator, senator one, Senator Post and uh, the women rep. That was the exchange that was there. So if Kenya Kwanza comes into place, then Kenya Kwanza is, tra is trying to spoil this arrangement for that was actually reached by Uhuru and Raila and Kalonzo. Yes, for the, those are the, the three principles of Azimio. What we are likely to see this same round is massive campaign in Nairobi led by his one and only Kenya Kwanza presidential candidate, Dr. William Samoy Ruto. And William Samoy Ruto is likely to use the deep state terminology in his campaign and say that, pro, pro, that maybe the deep state is trying to use now the muscles, the political muscles they have to frustrate the junior candidates. And Ruto might try to use the, the term youth leaders in the society, because we know Sakaja is a youth. But if you look at the age arrangement, and if you look at, you know, if you consider the age, Sakaja's age, and the times that he's actually said that he graduated, then one would like to think that maybe he was in university when he was 13 years old, and he started school when he was still in the womb. So I think that's where the problem lies. So, which way forward for Sakaja? I think Sakaja might have hit a political dead hand because there is nowhere to run. Your degree has been, has been, is not recognized by the CUE. The team university denounced your degree. And according to the, the, the constitution, you must have a degree to be able to be allowed to contest for the governor's position. So it's a dead hand for Sakaja. So literally, if I may say so. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's wait for what is likely to unfold, unfold going forward. At the same time, we are still keeping watch on Sonko's big day. That is tomorrow. It's a big day for Sonko. Declaration. So, uh, Let's wait for what is likely to happen for Sakaja's case and we promise to give you those information as they arise. 
And so dear ladies and gentlemen, please just take a moment and hit the subscribe button if you forgot to do so. You can give us a like. Until later, have a good night.